Thanksgiving week, and today's message is a spirit of thanksgiving. We're going to be in Psalm 100, Psalm 100, a beautiful psalm of thanksgiving. So you can turn in your Bible there or your Bible apps while I'm buying time for you to do so. Also on the YouVersion app, our sermon notes are on there every week. I don't know that we have a slide ready yet or I can explain it appropriately, but the YouVersion app looks like a brown Bible with gold letters that says Holy Bible and it's free and looky there. How about that? Yeah. So the, the sermon notes are on there every week, which is kind of cool for you guys. I got Justin calling me like Tuesday, Wednesday. Where's the sermon notes? Where's the sermon notes? No, I'm just messing. It's good stuff. So... Psalm 100. Last week we finished a, uh, a sermon series about counterfeit worship. Thou shall have no other gods before me, little g gods. And I hope you were able to take something from that. If anything, just put Jesus first in everything you do and you can't go wrong. This week, Thanksgiving week, a spirit of Thanksgiving and a capital S in the spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit inside of you, if you are a Christian, is constantly revealing the heart of God. Constantly. And thanksgiving is very close to the heart of God. It's throughout the scriptures. And when we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, He will reveal that we have much to be thankful for. You know, it's a tough life. Thanksgiving can be a hard time. There's some people who have lost family members right around Thanksgiving. And it makes it difficult. But his word says to be thankful at all times. So we're going to discover that a little bit as we walk through. And I truly believe Holy Spirit inside helps us to be thankful. So if you have not confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord or believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, but you want to, today's a great day to do that. See me, please. And you can walk in step with Holy Spirit power. So Psalm 100, there's five verses, and we're going to break down each verse. I know it sounds like a lecture, but it's going to be very short, so, so hang with me. It's five very short verses. Um, So we'll start in verse 1. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. We got any Ohio State fans in here? Raise your hand. Yeah. Anybody shouting yesterday at their TV during the Ohio State game? Some for joy, some not so joyful, right? (laughs) The Steelers, I'll probably be shouting today and making my dog nervous like I usually do. Why is it it's so easy to get that zealous and that motivated for a sporting event, but not for Jesus Christ? I don't know. I'm guilty sometimes myself. I do believe Holy Spirit plays a major factor in that. The more you're walking in step with Holy Spirit, the more joy you choose. Shout, it says, shout. Make God known publicly. Make him known. That's your job as a Christian. It really is. That's job number one. Go and make disciples of all nations. <laughs> make him known publicly. and not, not just in word, right? See, that's where I think Christians mess up. We give Christianity lip service. And then when people finally see through that facade, which doesn't take long, that leaves a bad taste on the world. They need something different. We have something different. Don't just speak it. Do it. Make God known publicly in word and in deed and in action. Share the gospel. Gospel means good news. It is good news. If you got good news, you want to share it, right? Share the gospel. Shout for joy to the Lord. You know, I think joy and thanksgiving go hand in hand. Let's think about it logically. If you're not joyful, it's really hard to be thankful, right? 
And if you're not thankful, then your joy is perhaps counterfeit, if there is such a thing. So joy and thanksgiving go hand in hand. You definitely need a measure of joy to be thankful. And joy is so important. I've said this before, but I love little logistical things. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. Strength. The, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Ipso facto, you are only as strong as your joy. Right? If the joy of the Lord is your strength, you're only as strong as your joy. And joy is a choice. You choose joy. Joy is of and by and through Jesus Christ and none other. That's where true joy comes from. You can find happiness in other places, but happiness is fleeting. Happiness is contingent on the circumstances. Joy is different. Joy is different. Philippians 4, 4 through 8. I absolutely love this passage. Um, What a wonderful charge for all of us uh, as we read the Bible and as we walk out Christ to try to emulate Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Here it is. Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. How often do we do, are we to rejoice? Only when you feel like it? No. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Exclamation point. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Aw. <laughs> the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition. What's the next two words? With thanksgiving, present your quest, request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always, even when you don't feel like it. And when you pray, do it with thanksgiving. God answers prayer always. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes it's wait. Hang on. So be thankful that you can approach an all-sovereign God and present your request to him because he knows what's best for you. So, what example of Jesus will you present to your family this weekend, this Thanksgiving? What example? We've all seen, you know, the... Christmas vacation and the meals and the Thanksgiving. And we've all lived it, right? With weird uncles and mom and dad's getting on your nerves really bad. And <laughs> what example of Jesus will you present to your family this Thanksgiving? It is Thanksgiving. It's a national holiday. And it's funny now when, I, it's not funny, it's actually sad. When those who don't believe celebrate Thanksgiving, I find that ironic. What are you thankful for? Who are you thankful to? Why? There is reason to give thanks. There is reason to be joyful. Share it with your family. Verse 2. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. This verse screams of the intimacy and approachability of God. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. That's something to be truly thankful for, that we can come before him, an almighty God. And worship the Lord with gladness. What's that look like? Are you a glad person? If we polled the 10 people who know you best and they had to rank your gladness on a scale of 1 to 10, where would that come out? Seriously, like, you know, it's, some of us are naturally cranky. I can be cranky. 
But you can choose joy. You choose it. I do every day. I do every day. The come before him in the Hebrew, this is interesting. In the original Hebrew, that, that phrase come before him is, literally means come into his face. <laughs> come into his face. I was, uh, we were praying here uh, before the service and I was thanking God for the thanksgivings I had when I was a child. I mean, you talk about Norman Rockwell. It was. My grandparents owned a 200-acre farm. There were pies everywhere. She made this hickory nut cake where she, like, had perfect hickory nuts decorated all the way around it, and then she'd hide it, and it was my job to find the cake when we got there for Thanksgiving. It was, it was awesome, and it was intimate. And that come into his face, I love my grandma so much because she made me feel the love of Jesus. She walked it. There was no doubt she was authentic. And when I was little, she'd get me up in her face and I'd come into her face and I'd smell that grandma smell that was just awesome. And I'd see that she had the look of love. Even my, my, my wife says, like everybody that met her, she just had this look. It was love. Come in, in that intimacy of being in her face. And that's what we can be like when we come before him. And he looks at you and sees you through the lens of Jesus, his son. <laughs> what kind of love is that? What kind of joy is that? <laughs> Come into his face with joyful songs. Grandma liked to hear me sing, man. Marky JJ, sing me a song. <laughs> I used to hate Marky JJ when she called me that. And now I miss it so much. Isn't that funny how that works? Hmm. Well, what if I can't sing, you might say. <laughs> well, the original King James, I think, of verse 1 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You can make a joyful noise without singing a lick. My whole family can sing pretty well. My son, not so much. But man, I'll tell you what, I miss the days when he was a teenager and he'd be back in his room singing to Jesus. <laughs> so off key, but so happy. Make a joyful noise. He loves you. He wants you to sing right there, and he's going to sing with you. Come before him with joyful songs. How did you approach coming to church this morning? Did you have to come to church? Or do you get to go to church? <laughs> See, there's a choice right there. There is an attitude that you can choose. You and only you. I choose many, many, many times in my life to go to church kicking and screaming. It is what you make of it, man. It is what you make of it. Verse 3. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Know that the Lord is God. There's a Bible verse that says fear is the beginning of wisdom, right? That's true. The Lord is God. And he deserves to be feared. And not so much shaking in your boots fear, unless you're apart from him outside of Christ, I would be shaken in my boots. But those that are there, I'm not sure they realize the perilous position that they are in. That's why we need to be his hands and feet. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. Not shaking in your boots, but a holy reverence in knowing that the Lord is God. He made you fearfully and wonderfully in his image. It says, we are his. Man, if that's not something to be thankful for, we are his. How so? How are we his? Well, he made us. And it gives us a choice to be part of his flock, to choose. It's not magic words. He has to draw you. You have to, you have to feel that tug on your heart from Holy Spirit. Oh, 
humble ourselves and pray and seek and turn and give thanks. Give thanks. We're the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says that the sheep know the master's voice. And the shepherd cares for the flock. What a great metaphor for how how God treats us, how Jesus treats us, takes care of us. There's great peace and joy in that. The sheep know. So they, you know, why would they, why would they run? They're cared for. They're surrendered. They're surrendered. It's a great uh, metaphor for us to surrender. Do you truly, do you truly understand God's sovereignty? The Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. That's Acts 17, 28. In him we live and move and have our being. Even if you don't believe, that's true. (laughs) In him. Every breath is a gift from God. How do you respond to that? Thanksgiving should be at the top of the list. Verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. God wants us to have an attitude of gratitude. Enter with thanksgiving and praise, but it's more than an attitude. You see, an attitude only goes as far as what's behind it, what backs it up. My dad always said, don't let your mouth write a check that your butt can't cash. (laughs) good advice good advice you see an attitude is more than speak Carol it was you or Joe who posted it this morning and it was dynamic Anne Frank said dead people receive more flowers than the living ones because um, regret is stronger than gratitude man oh Dead people receive more flowers than the living ones because regret is stronger than gratitude. This should not be, right? (laughs) This should not be. Just like you have a choice to be joyful, you have a choice to be truly thankful and show that thankfulness by baking somebody a pie, namely your pastor who likes pecan. (laughs) Just messing. Probably going to get 20 pecan pies now. No, seriously. Love thy neighbor. He means that. That's a great way to show thanksgiving. What a wonderful way to show thanksgiving. Actually, the only way to show true thanksgiving is by passing it on. I think that's why my thanksgiving at my grandparents were so wonderful. Because everybody contributed. Everybody, we, oh, it was just beautiful. Wow. We sang the doxology or whatever it is before we sat down. Glory be to the Father. Oh, it was just so beautiful. Anybody got memories like that at Thanksgiving? I hope so. I pray so. I miss it so much. Thank God for that. Hmm. Enter his gates and his courts. You see, he welcomes us into his kingdom. Again, the intimacy. Come into my house. The gate's open. Come on in. (laughs) And his kingdom, according to Romans 14, 17, is one of righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Those are the elements of God's kingdom. And he welcomes us into that. We like the peace and joy part a lot, right? (laughs) What about the righteousness? That's first. That's first on the list. Do we like that part? I didn't so much. Righteousness is important. It's an important part of joy. It's an important part of thanksgiving. It's an important part of the Christian life. You see, James 5, 16, that's why the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Because <laughs> righteousness is, it's commodity in the kingdom. 
I'm going to get some theological comments on that one. I have to discover that one myself. Righteousness is a commodity in the kingdom. Both joyful singing and humble submission at once. That's the picture of surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. If until you're fully, fully surrendered, none of this is not going to make sense. There's always going to be a doubt. There's always going to be something until you just fully wave the white flag. You continue giving praise. It says, give thanks again. It ends that way. You continue giving thanks and praise, representing his kingdom. Rejoice always. This is from 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you and Jesus Christ. I've been asked the question straight up, what's God's will for me? <laughs> Let's see. What's God's will for you? Uh, rejoice always. Pray continually. And give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. There it is. Is your life a demonstration of thanksgiving and praise to those you influence? If not, that's not a problem. It's an opportunity, right? <laughs> you got something to shoot for. Make your life a demonstration of thanksgiving and praise to those you influence. Verse 5, we'll close it up. It says, for the Lord is good and his love endures, how long? Forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Forever is a long time. Right? <laughs> That's a long time, more than any of us can grasp. I'm thankful for eternal, unconditional love. I'm truly thankful for that. That's what we all desire from the bottom of our hearts, isn't it really? Don't you just want to be unconditionally loved? Don't you just want that? Don't you just hunger for that? He gives it freely. I'm thankful for that. He says he's faithfulness. We can count on God to keep his promises forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. He breaks generational curses. Anybody just feel like they're trapped in a curse from their dad and their dad and their dad or their aunt? Like that's the enemy. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Just because your dad did it doesn't mean that's who you are. He breaks that if you let him. Start a new Thanksgiving tradition. How about that? Instead of drinking a whole bottle of wild turkey, just eat the turkey. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy what I've done on Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Pass on the leg legacy of Jesus to your family. That's what happened at my grandparents. That's what happened. That was the root of it. It was a legacy of Jesus, a legacy of thanksgiving. I thank God for that. Pass on the true meaning of thanksgiving. Do something that points it to Jesus this year. One little thing. Shout, as in verse 1, shout. It's okay to have fun and shout about Jesus and worship and come before him in song. Maybe that's what you do, sing a song. Know that he is God and that he made us. We are his. I, just, I think that's my favorite three words in that whole passage. We are his. Man, thank you. We're his. Let's pray. God, thank you that we are yours, the sheep of your pasture. Father, I thank you for a time when we can all take a breath, celebrate, 
and truly be thankful, truly choose thankfulness, truly choose joy, truly choose to be above all the stuff that the world's throwing at us with the coronavirus and with the election and with the news and the country splitting. You are still sovereign. You are still God. The church is not dying. The church is the bride of Christ. You are coming back for a spotless bride. Help us to be that. Help us to be righteous. Help us to live out your peace. Help us to demonstrate your joy so that the world sees that righteousness and that joy and that peace of your kingdom and sees the difference and sees our thankfulness and says, I got to have some of that. How do I get that? Help us. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.